actual budget amendment process uh, this evening. Uh, there's a draft um, that you have in front of you, and this draft is based on uh, the draft preliminary financial statements, uh, the audit. We have um, identified a new format. Um, this is a format that Jamie found while doing some research online. It's the best way, um, best practices um, for how to do budget amendments from here on out in the town of Waukesha. Uh, they were done historically, but not with as much detail. And the benefit to this is we've identified expenses in excess of $5,000. That was our parameter. Um, and so what you'll see here are revenues that were an increase in budget, over budget accounts, for a total of $112,503. Over budget items were within the expense categories, um, where we overspent in those categories of $157,387, and uh, a largest amount of that was legal fees of $103. A little bit deceiving is the total ambulance of the 32,462. Um, because we don't know how many ambulance runs there are going to be in any year, the budget amount is in the fire department part of the budget. Um, but we do, during the course of the year, identify uh, what expenses were attributable to actually fire department, fire inspection, and ambulance runs. And so this is our opportunity to um, clarify in the budget how those numbers should play out. Um, it's just not a number that we can do cleanly at the beginning of the year because we don't know what the split is going to be between the fire department runs and the ambulance runs. So that's a clarification and really moving of funds. We were not over in that category technically. That was 157,387. And then we go to the underspent, um, which is starts at the bottom of the first page and is um, by all accounts the longest section. We were underspent in the budget $295,535. Um, the net underspent then between the increase in revenues. Is your microphone on? And oh. Well, that would have been helpful. Yeah. Lots of Do I have to start over? No. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's unusual. I was thinking that. Put that on. So, all right. Well, I'll just do the, the total under budget was 295535 So the net underspent, or the net under budget overall for the year, $250,651. So $250,651 underspent. Um, I'm suggesting that we move two items to 2013 in their same categories. That would be account number 53330, ditching for $56,321, and 53360, road repairs, for $67,353. So those two items account for $123,674. I believe those items need to be um, done and uh, should be done in 2013. That leaves $126,977 that we still have available to us um, uh, because of the, the attention to detail in, in this fiscal year. And my suggestion to the board, um, and this was originally an idea that Mr. Dansky had bantered about, and I thought a very, very good one, because uh, he's um, always looking to the future, uh, is to pr provide for um, a capital account. Now, we can talk about if we want to designate that in some way at this point in time. Uh, we do have lots of issues that I think are going to be identified both in roadways and in fire department. Um, but I think rather than allow those funds simply to go back into the general fund not to be designated, that we do indeed designate those funds uh, to a future capital outlay. And, um, start building a fund for the replacement of that, all, all those infrastructure items and large capital expenses over time. And I don't know, Mr. if you'd like to talk about your theory a little bit related to um, the reason for that and, and what could have been done with the ambulance fees. We would have had a little extra money every year to buy, buy a fire truck and, and whatever else. You want to give us some feedback on that? Certainly, yeah, it's going to be your best, but it's not on the agenda item. What's well, an agenda? Sure. Oh, you can talk the about capital the capital investment part. Yes. I've done some preliminary work on um, a capital investment program. The town over the last 12 years um, really hasn't had a plan in place. We 
taxed as things popped up and we needed. Um, we taxed over a very short time to acquire the quaint truck. Uh, it would be more customary, and I think Renee, you would support <coughs> this, that you would take such a large capital expenditure and spread that out over more than a three-year span of time. Um, and, and, and that's just, that's policy stuff. Um, the board at that time felt that that was appropriate. I'm not trying to second guess that. I would find that that would not be the way I would want to address it. My recommendation would be that the, the board embark on uh, creating no less than a 10-year capital investment program. And I would prefer to look at a 20-year program. We have trucks in the fire department that are, Dan is the oldest one, about, about 27, 28 years old. 28. Uh, we have equipment hiding out in the DPW um, that is also aging. Uh, and, and we haven't set aside reserves. We, um, with the first budget that we did for 2011, we started to um, put aside $50,000 per budget for required radio upgrades that will hit us in the, the coming two-year time frame. Uh, we will, at the close of the 2013 budget, have $150,000 in there. Uh, the estimated expense might range, if I recall, Dan, we were talking somewhere between $350,000, $400,000 for those radio upgrades, so we'll be darn close. The county might afford us some financing options on those that we may need or want to look at, depending on how those are offered to us. Um, if it's little or no interest carrying costs, we may want to leverage that money differently, and those are things that, that I think the board should be working on, uh, and should be looking at, um, and, and we should continue the $50,000. Um, when you look at the Quint, it's a you know $900,000 truck a few years ago. Um, it's probably a million and a half or more when you reach the end of its lifespan if you want to replace it. So how do you, you know, depreciate that out and tax that in a way that um, you know, I think is a fair taxation, which is not something that you do over three years. It should be something spread out more over the lifespan of the vehicle uh, that is in service. So, I mean, I promote that, that we should move in that direction. It is not to say, hey, look, we found $126,000, Let, let's go buy some stuff. It's, hey, we have trucks in the fire department that don't work. I mean, and I don't want to scare you, I mean, but there are things about them that we, that we put a patch on and we continue to wrench on and we continue to make them work. Um, sooner or later, that becomes a, a, a bad idea. And the, probably the time you find out that it's a bad idea is when someone's house is on fire and you go to turn the pump on. And, you know, um, so I, I think it's an intelligent way to approach it. And I, I, again, would like to see no less than a 10-year plan, and I prefer to go to a 20-year plan. These are comprehensive plans. These are not 15 pages thick. These require full inventories be done of all the assets um, to really understand what they are and how to depreciate them. It involves working with the accountants to, to craft that plan. Um, and it'll have some expense just to even get the plan put in place and then to, to put the funding mechanism in there within the budget. So it isn't so much of a, hey, let's sit around and talk about what we should put in capital. Uh, we'll be able to open up the book and say, hey, here's what is planned for our capital. Here's what we were thinking and a future board um, would be able to look at that document as well and understand uh, where things were um, when the board decided to put that plan in place. And, and then we're also looking at some emergency, you know, things are going to break and how do we address the emergencies of, you know, such and such a piece broke, uh, like we did last year when the uh, extrication equipment um, wasn't working optimally and, and we were going to have lots of costs to repair it, we ended up replacing it. And we ended up doing uh, some accounting <clears throat> positioning to, to fund that because there wasn't a capital expenditure there. We did put that estimate to replace those was thirty grand, um, and we had put ten thousand dollars into the twenty thirteen budget to start to pay for it. Unfortunately, we didn't make it all the way. Um, 
with that equipment and it needed to be replaced sooner rather than later. So uh, it's something that I'd like to do and you know, I'd like to get the direction of the board to, to do that at some point. I don't know if tonight's the night that people want to do that, but um, you know, I'm committed to working with whoever would like to participate in that. Um, I've even invited, um, I, I, I chatted with Dan a little bit, but I also asked uh, Stu Bocoltz if he wanted to participate in it. It was light conversation. It wasn't, hey, what are you doing on Tuesday of next week? Uh, but, uh, you know, I think the more heads that we put in that conversation, uh, the better off we are. Are you looking for a board member, Joe? Sure. Oh, I would love to go. Okay. All right. Well, it's not on the agenda tonight, so you guys can have some <coughs> conversations about how that moves forward uh, as far as setting up that process. So moving on in the document itself, we also have capital outlay that we're making a recommendation for carry forward. Um, that's count number 57100, which is general government for 69,953. Count number 57200, public safety in an amount of 33,795. And uh, current account 57300, park, which is recommended to move to general government. 57100, uh, which I would uh, consider to be the funding source for the new high-speed multifunction um, imaging system. That total then is $113,748, and uh, I make a recommendation that the, the budget amendment as presented uh, be approved. I, I'm not Respect making a motion. Me. No, I'm making a recommendation, but I would like the motion from someone else. Hector, I believe I need to ask for some advice. Is the state statute require that the motion be made by MJ or merely that she bring the piece to us? I, I'm happy to make a motion, the motion, if that would clarify any question. In fact, I will make that motion. I make the motion that the resolution number 0228201PA amending the 2012 budget expenditures be approved. Well, I'll second your motion since okay. you answered the question. Well, it's simpler and I, I, I agree work process, so I'm happy to stand behind it. Uh, discussion. Anybody else want to go? I will. Okay. A um, couple of things, not in any particular order, but first thing, I would like to thank all of these, since the public forum part of this is over, I'd like to thank all of you who came out tonight to offer your <coughs> suggestions and comments to us. Some are kinder than others, but they're all appreciated. I think that's a good and healthy part of democracy in action, so thank you for that. Um, it goes without saying that we have many divergent opinions in this room. Having said that, I think my self-assessment of the management of the fiscal affairs of this town, I think, at least during my tenure on the board, which is almost two years, I think we've done a pretty good job of that. I'm not looking to pat myself on the back or anybody else, but I think um, Renee wanted to thank you and your associate for the guidance that you have given. To us, um, we struggle a bit, but even to all of my other fellow board members and that type of thing, I think um, I think we can do a lot better, but I think we've done uh, a reasonably good job so far. Speaking specifically to the uh, resolution that is before us, um, I have a couple of concerns, I'll identify them. There's an awful lot mixed into this, it's budget amendment and reappropriations and reconciliations and everything. My, um, assessment of it is we are too late to be doing major budget amendments and I think we're too soon to be doing reappropriation of some of these things. I'm with you all in spirit in terms of some of those priorities we need to consider for spending but even the question I posed to Renee said that the actual amount of that unencumbered balance will not yet be determined until the audit is finished. So I think we're too soon on the budget amend, or too late on the budget amendments, too soon on any reappropriation of whatever that unencumbered balance may end up being. I am 
uh, taken by our ordinances. Um, notwithstanding that some of them may need revision, we're bound to enforce them and follow them for what they are. And section 3-1-4 does say, no money shall be drawn from the treasury of the town, nor shall any obligation for the expenditure of money be incurred, except in pursuance of, annual, of the annual appropriation in the adopted budget, or when changed by the section that allows us to do changes or amendments to the budget. It goes on to say at the close of each fiscal year, any unencumbered balance of any appropriation shall revert to the general fund, subject to reappropriation and so forth. I am uh, concerned, and again looking, Renee, at the email communication that you sent to Jamie and copied to Angie of March 8th of 2012 that says, I would suggest that you do a motion on a current basis for any significant individual items. <coughs> the attorney fees are a good example of this estimate. I think Renee gave us wise counsel on that almost a year ago. I mean, we're nine days away from being a year old on that recommendation. And I'm not looking to assess blame tonight. We've done enough of that, but I think that we've not done well uh, to not address that before that. The legal fees are the big issue for me. Uh, two years running, um, budget for $150,000, spend $253,000. We should not be dealing with that issue, uh, in my judgment, at this point in time. Our fiscal budget end, or our fiscal year rather, ended. Even though we've had a little bit of definition about what ending the fiscal year means, but that really ended on the 31st of December of 2012. Attempting to amend it two months after our fiscal year ended, in my judgment, is an ill-timed farce. I will not support it. I don't want to be in a, a name, I have my name associated with it in any way. Um, from my perspective, this is about the future, but a budget is a before the fact plan, not an after the fact gimmick to cover your hind quarters. So I cannot support the motion, but I will certainly uh, support many of the good uh, ideas and suggestions that uh, many of my fellow board members have offered for how we need to spend money going into the future. That's something that needs to be addressed in the next couple of months. Mr. German, do you have anything to add? I will concur with Mr. Fisher. Of course. He spoke very elegant. He did. He always does. Very good speaker. Unfortunately, a misguided approach, if I may say, and it is not, thank you, it is not in service to the town of Waukesha to not handle the financials, financial matters, matters in an appropriate way. Uh, Mr. German, you have been on this board since 2007, and you have approved budget amendments previously. Do you know a timetable that you typically did that in? No, I do not. No, I do. It was I March. I figured you would. Well, because I like to be detail-oriented. <coughs> um, it was March and April of each year. But those board members were, were recalled and they're no longer with us. But your approval on those items and, and why, why were the objections that you are um, Working on so heavily in the last few months, why weren't those objections done at that time when you were approving those same budget amendments in a March and April time frame? I'd have to look back on my record. <laughs> What's different today than was? I have then? to look back on my records, Andy. What records would those bills be? I have to look back, Andy. Okay. Well, bottom line is. Um, Gentlemen, you are again keeping the town of Waukesha from doing its work, from moving forward in an appropriate way. Um, the town's association, well, let's start with the history of the town of Waukesha and budget amendments, and even though I might not have always agreed with how the previous uh, auditing firm handled a lot, you know, some of their items, they did prepare budget amendments for the town of Waukesha. 
and um, the town board members did their job by approving those amendments. In many cases, they happened in March, April, and even later in the year. Uh, sometimes the audit wasn't even done until October, November of the following year, so I have no idea how they understood really what their numbers were. But in this case, we have clearly identified down to $5,000 out of a $3 million document, right? Those items that are over revenue, those items which are under budget and expense, those items that are over budget and expense. So it's a clear track from what we budgeted, what our actual results were, what we want to identify as going to the future, what items we want to be sure that the town of Waukesha completes, specifically, let's say, ditching and road repairs, which need to be done. And we definitely need to start thinking about the future and putting a capital budget together. Um, Mr. Fisher, I hear you saying that it's too early to do the budget amendment because you no, don't have the final too numbers. Late to do the budget amendment. Well, when, when should we do the budget amendment? Let's say the legal I, fees were not... To answer your question, I, I think you ought to follow the advice that Renee, the good advice that she gave you in the letter of March of last year. When do you anticipate that this budget amendment, let's say there were no legal fees, the legal fees were not an issue. Let's just say the legal fees were not over. When would you anticipate that this budget amendment should be presented to you? If they just cross out that 103000 when should this document come to you? I think we need to follow our ordinance that basically says that you cannot expend money that has not been appropriated. So I think those budget amendments should be made any time we're basically exceeding a budgetary line, line item. That's just that simple. And that's my opinion. As I'm quoting from January 4th, 2013, an email from Lee Torno, who is the Assistant Legal Counsel of the Wisconsin Towns Association. As for budget amendments, they have no prescribed timeline in the statute because such a notion is impossible in practice. Anyway, 65.90 sub 5. Any properly noticed town board meeting by a two-thirds vote of the body can amend the town budget. They can and should do so as needed and or desired, and there is no legal limitation on the practice otherwise. And I presented this document to the board several times. I, I know you're all choosing, uh, not all, but those of you that are, choosing to ignore um, the advice of the Towns Association, uh, Council as well, the, the advice of our audit firm, the advice of our attorney, and this takes me back to the $6,000 that we had to spend because you would not approve the good advice that we were getting from our vendors. And now we have a clear document. The good people of the town of Waukesha have listened to us for, what, two and a half hours. I think they understand. They've had a chance to read it. Um, it's clearly presented. I don't hear anybody saying that they don't believe these numbers are accurate. Um, what is the problem? Why can't we move forward and close out our books properly and do the good accounting that we should be doing here in the town of Waukesha? You are keeping us from doing our work at this point, Mr. Fisher and Mr. German. Would you reconsider your position? I have a letter here from the Towns Association attorney also, and it says we need to follow our ordinances. As for budget amendments, they have no prescribed timeline, okay? Yeah, this per, is... Per state statute, not our ordinance. Do you want to do the business of the town of Waukesha or not, Mr. Fisher and Mr. Drew? Because that's really what we're talking about here. You are stopping the town from moving forward. We cannot close out our books until our work is done, or we haven't done a good job. And quite frankly, we have to work all year and now have the two of you position yourselves for what I have not heard to be any good reason. Uh, you know better than the attorneys, you know better than the accountants, you know, you know better than everybody. Um, why can't we just move on? What do you object to in this document? I guess what I object to is the demeaning kind of attitude that, don't sigh please, that you're taking for it. Uh, I have presented, I think, my principal point of view I respect your 
prerogative to disagree with me. I respect anyone's prerogative to disagree with me. But that doesn't give you the opportunity to try to personally attack me. I have told you what I think are good reasons for my position. I don't think doing a budget amendment at this point in time accomplishes anything other than to maybe make us feel good. We can't do anything about it at this point in time. I'm willing to assume some of the responsibility for it, even though read our ordinances. You, Chairperson Van Sock, and you, Jamie, by ordinance have the responsibility for not expending money that hasn't been appropriated. I'm not interested in getting into a, you know, an argument of trying to accuse people of things, but I've offered my principal points of view. I respect yours. I ask you to be a bit dignified and respect my point of view. Thank you. Quite a speech, Mr. Fisher. Doesn't change the fact that we are not able to move forward. Um, we have $123,000 that was in the 2012 budget that on work that could and should be done in 2013. Your lack of ability to support this resolution does not allow us to do that work for the town in 2013. You were very adamant on not increasing the budget in legal fees last year at the end of the budget term. So, you know, we could be facing this situation again. And what everybody, in every argument you have, we are under budget. Does it not impress upon you that we are under budget by $250,000 under budget? I mean, you can jump up and down about this budget amendment business and that we went over in the legal fees, and you know very well that you approved all of those bills except for the $6,000, and that Mr. Bansky made a very thorough presentation at the budget meeting this year in November explaining the legal fees and why we went over and what it was used for. And Mr. Um, Hom has indicated that we were unanimous in all of our decisions to spend those legal fees, but yet here we are and we have our audit done ahead of time and it's a clean audit and we can create our own financial statements and we're ready to put our monies where they need to be, including a capital plan which just organization has never had and you're going to stand on ceremony of some sort? I don't understand that. Okay, I'll answer your question two ways, and I will try to do it respectfully. First of all, when I gave my little speech before, I think I told everybody that I think the town has done a pretty good job of managing the fiscal affairs of this town since I've been on the board for two years. I think I gave us a B. Some might argue, maybe I'm grading too high, but I think we've done a pretty good job, so I'm patting all of you on the back and myself a little bit. I'm proud of the fact that we've got money left over at the end of the year. I think that speaks speaks well, and I think we're maybe not entitled to be praised, but I think that should be acknowledged, because I, I think that's a good and right type of thing. Um, where I part company with it, and for you to say, I'm standing in the way of spending money to do road work or something that we didn't do, that's hooey. I'll be happy to address this in the next month or something like that after we know where we're at. We can take and do budget amendments and should do budget amendments if we want to do that to increase the spending for it. The money isn't gone. We'll be doing just as we're directed to do by ordinance in section 3-1-4 and that's simply let the unencumbered balance go to the general reserve fund as Renee has said is properly done. I'm just saying that we're too late on the budget amendment, so that we just want to make ourselves feel good, and we're too late to be doing the reappropriation re of it, but I think we had some excellent ideas that you have pointed out, Joe has pointed out, Everett has pointed out, I haven't heard from Mike tonight, but that you guys have pointed out, and I think we need to address those. I got, I mean, here's where the bottom, bottom line meets the road. This agenda was put together, I knew nothing about what we're going to be taking up tonight until I saw the agenda last Friday. I actually got more information about what we were doing by reading the Waukesha Now newspaper than I did in any other source. I got the stuff that's sitting on the back table here this afternoon, okay? And thank you, if it's Renee or whoever it is, I'm sure you've been working on this for an extended period of time. 
I got up early this afternoon. I've got a full time job. I'm trying, let me anybody's concerned here, trying to get a big project out of my office. I work until it was time to slam down some supper and come over here tonight. We're making important decisions here. I think it's a courtesy to all of us and to try to put our best talents forward and talk about it. I'm not prepared to do some of this stuff just at a whim like that. That's not that's not good policy. So don't take that personally, but to throw that out and expect that somebody's going to digest this and speak to it at the meeting tonight, I don't think that's a very good way to budget or plan or organize the future of the town of Lancashire. So don't take it personally, but that's my point. There's nothing personal about it, Mr. Fisher. It's the business of the town that's that's at risk. And um, this is there's nothing unusual here. You're not going to be redoing our audit. I'm pretty sure that's why we hire Renee. Uh, the documents, we can certainly hold off for two weeks or four weeks or whatever you think is appropriate. Um, but you are now delaying the budget amendment process, probably into the normal time frame for the town of Waukesha, which is typically in March or April of the year. So that's fine with me if that's the choice that you'd like to make to push it down the road. But it needs to be done. It should be done. We should be doing it proactively. This is the case here. Um, and I'm, I'm simply disappointed by the positioning that, uh, that the two of you are taking. I don't think it's in the best interest of the town of Waukesha. Madam Chair, it strikes me that this is a reconciliation of a checking account. When we sit down at the end of the month and we've paid our bills and put our deposits from our paychecks into our checking account and you get the little ledger out and, oh geez, you didn't anticipate the $3.50 bank charge for the ATM card and, oh boy, I guess my utility bill went up this month. Um, and it's an auto withdrawal, I, I better make that correction in my bank account. Not approving the budget amendment, doesn't put any dollars in a different category, it doesn't spend the money different, it doesn't allocate it different. This document merely memorializes exactly what was done and reconciles the account for what was spent and what was brought in. It, it's just that plain and simple. It doesn't do anything else other than shift numbers, and probably more importantly, what it does do is it does create the funding for the road work, because we can do additional road work by approving the budget amendment, because those dollars can carry from 12 to 13. It does provide us to look at capital expenditures, um, and, and set that money. That money is then designated for capital expenditures, so we, we can start to look at those needs. Uh, you know, Chief has said a number of times that he has truck concerns, and, and what truck we're going to get. And I got to tell you, it's probably a half a million dollar adventure we're about to go on as the town. Um, having $126,000 in your back pocket as you embark on a half million dollar expense to replace aging equipment is a nice thing. And again, all we're doing, and I, I, I'm not trying to break this down to a much more simplistic form, it, I mean, I've got my bank ledger out of my checking account and I'm reconciling it, saying, hey, this is the money I got and that's the way I spent it. I, I don't see why we don't approve it and be done with it. And how will putting the money into the general fund, Joe, change any of that outcome? does change it, which is exactly why I'm saying, why wouldn't we clear our books, close our audit, and say that we've reconciled our bank account when it doesn't make any difference? There's no impact. Um, for the funds that, you're, that are sitting in front of everybody, the, at least then for the residents' sake, when we present that budget to you, again, we'll have the annual meeting in April, but then at least then you can be explained to as to exactly what those funds are for. When you put it into your general fund, it's just that, general. 
So at least then those items are then identified for the public that it is going to be used for your road source and not to be used as general as possible for you all. And I think that's what we're trying to, when you do a budget amendment to appropriate for those monies, to get that out there for you as the public to state that these monies are being spent for you, for the town, to improve it each and every day for you all. And Jamie, question. Uh, we, we do a budget, we have line items. Where did we come up with the extra money to pay the attorneys to go over on his line out of the budget? It was right in front of you, Mr. Gallon. Yes. So we're going to put money into the budget, and it's laying there, and the same thing can happen again when it goes into the general fund. It specifically comes out for a certain item. Wrong. The so, amount that is being so. used right here has not come out of the general fund at all. This is part of the budget that was budgeted that you guys all approved back in last year. So it is the monies that are being spent within the town budget lines. Nothing is coming out of the budget fund. We are trying to designate those funds for future use so you all for the town can use it for their use and explain it to them. Well, I'm going to put it What you guys are looking for. I'm going to put it in the bank and not under my mattress. Okay? I support the general fund. There. <sighs> Gentlemen, I, I guess you're just trying to push this down the road for, for a variety of reasons, but um, I, I think we need to, at this point, call the question. We'll get on the record as to what everybody's position is on this particular item. We'll do that by roll call. Jamie, whenever you're ready. Sure. Chairman Van Suck? Yes. Super I'm sorry. Supervisor Bansky? Yes. Supervisor German? No. Supervisor Laska? Yes. Supervisor Fisher? No. The, Before you uh, call the final vote, can I have a moment of privilege with Hector, please? Certainly. Hector, if I change my vote to present, does that put me in the majority of name, or does my vote just not count? Your vote does not count under Robert's rule, under the state statute, and under the ordinance. You need a two-thirds vote, in other words, you need four affirmative votes supporting the amendment. So absent the four votes, the amendment would fail, right. and I would not be considered the majority if I moved my vote to present. Correct. That will leave my vote as is. Thank you. Because the specific language of the statute says, unless authorized by a vote of two thirds of the entire membership of the governing body of the municipality. Yes, we know. And so does Mr. Fisher and Mr. Berman. All right, that position is over. We'll move on. We'll come at a that. All right, we will reconvene at this point. Um, conferring was Mr. Bansky and Mr. DeLamora. What have we determined? Well, um, oh. thank you. All right, go ahead. Uh, just to recap what I uh, understood to have happened, Mr. Bansky made a motion to suspend the rules pursuant to Section 2-319 to suspend the rules uh, with respect to the procedural motion, the procedural provisions of the ordinances encompassed by 2-3-13 through 2-3-16. Uh, and then he made a motion orally to move to reconsider resolution 02-28-2013-A, amending the 2012 budgeted expenditures to the March 14, 2013 town board meeting that was seconded by Mr. Alaska. Your rules provide that a reconsideration of a question uh, can be advanced uh, as provided in 2-3-16. It shall be in order for any member, if in the majority, to move for the reconsideration of any vote in question at the same meeting or at the next succeeding regular adjourned meeting, a motion to reconsider being put in law shall not be renewed. However, it is my opinion 
that caused the motion to suspend the rules, suspended the operation of 2-3-16, Mr. Bansky's motion, oral motion, has made is in order. During the brief recess, I had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Fisher, who raised an interesting question, and that is, what about the obligation to put, forgive me if I'm paraphrasing, please correct me, the obligation to put a motion in writing. Your provisions of the Ordinance 2-3-15 South A in Part 3 Um, any member of the town board prior to a vote on the motion may request that the motion and any amendments adopted to the motion be reduced to writing and submitted in writing to the members of the town board prior to the final vote on the matter. It's my opinion that given the prior motion to suspend the rules, Section 2-3 dash 15 sub a, which I read in part, is suspended. However, for the sake of clarity, I have urged Mr. Bansky to reduce his motion to writing, which I believe he had done so, and so it is my recommendation, my opinion, that the motion is in order. May I pose a question to you? And we have in writing, says Mr. Bansky moved to reconsider, and, and I guess clarify this for me, he was not in the majority on the vote on that motion, so how is it that he uh, can be the one to move to reconsider? Because his motion to suspend the rules that requires that is not operable with regards to the motion that he made. All right, so we've reduced the motion to writing. Um, would you like to read your motion? I, I can certainly read it. Uh, the motion was uh, the document that's in everybody's hands here on the board says motion by Supervisor Bansky, the by is not in there, it says motion. Supervisor Bansky moved to reconsider resolution number 02-28-2013A amending 2012 budgeted expenditures to March 14, 2013 Town Board meeting agenda was seconded by Supervisor Lasker. All right, um, we'll do a roll call vote. Chairman Van Sack? Yes. Supervisor Bansky? Yes. Supervisor German? No. Supervisor Laska? Yes. Supervisor Fisher? No. Okay. Passes. So, simple majority rules. So it will be reconsidered on the March 14th meeting.